Hi everyone, today we will be talking about stress and strain in ARDS. And as you all know, ARDS disease is a heterogeneous disease, meaning that we have areas of the lungs that are diseased with atelectasis and consolidation compared to other areas that are relatively healthy. And in inspiration, if you apply a pressure, the air will preferentially uh, go to those healthier areas of the lungs because the pressure required to open this alveoli would be much less than the pressure required to open the diseased alveoli. So if you would, uh, uh, if you have a normal, nasty, healthy recruited lungs here, and you're looking at the alveoli, and you apply 6 ml per kg during inspiration, this will result into even distribution or even displacement uh, expansion of the alveoli throughout the alveolar surface area. Compared to putting the same amount of air into a diseased lungs where we have areas of the lungs that are collapsed and areas that are normal, the air will preferentially go into the normal alveoli resulting into more expansion of this alveoli compared to the collapsed alveoli. So this area of the lung which is much healthier will endure much more strain compared to the initial case here where the air was distributed equally to all alveoli. So what is stress and strain? In physiology, stress is the pressure applied on the area and the strain is the resultant deformation or the new shape of that uh, material as a result of the stress. In pulmonary physiology, that pressure equals the transpulmonary pressure, which is the difference between tracheal pressure and intrathoracic pressure. And strain is the change of volume and shape of the lung relative to the functional residual capacity. So if you have a rod here and you apply stress on it or pressure, you end up with elongating this uh, rod. This part that is elongated here, the delta part of it, relative to the original length of the rod will equal the strain endured by this material. And of course, different elasticity will result in different strain. So the higher the elasticity, the less strain on the material. If you apply a force here on a biological tissue, you end up having so much of displacement or strain compared to if you apply the same force on the plastic or on a rubber, will be much lower strain or displacement. And the more force you put on, the more displacement you uh, end up having till you get to a point that is called a yield point. And if you continue to apply the same uh, force or higher force, you end up into a fracture point, which is the point of pneumothorax in our biological tissue on the lung. So it is important to understand uh, the alveolar microstrain, which is a strain occurring at the level of the alveoli. And uh, that would be calculated based on calculating the alveolar perimeter in inspiration minus the alveolar perimeter in expiration. So the changes in the surface area of the alveoli relative to the surface area in expiration would be the microstrain or the alveolar strain. So that would be the delta perimeter of inspiration minus expiration divided by the perimeter in expiration. So take a look on some videos uh, taken by the video scope placed directly on the surface of the lung. On the left side, we have a healthy lung and notice that with inspiration the alveoli are barely moving. The uh, alveolar space is slightly increased 
in inspiration compared to expiration. Thus, the strain at the level of alveoli is very minimal. It's normal lung. On the other hand, on the right side, we have a diseased lung. And notice the change in the surface area of the alveoli. A huge expansion of the alveoli between expiration and inspiration. It looks like this alveoli are almost exercising in every single breath, making the strain at the level of uh, the alveoli very high. So this is a very high strain compared to the strain of the normal alveoli. So to understand this further, uh, I think the study is uh, very nice in delineating this concept. The study was done by Dr. Kolish Singul, published in the JAMA Surgical 2014, and was done in rats with uh, ARDS, where they looked at the airspace between ex expiration and inspiration with increasing PEEP level in low tidal volume ventilation. So if you take a look on the PEEP of 5, you would see cluster of alveoli here that are partially open. Other alveoli are almost collapsed. There's good two open alveoli in the middle here. Notice what happens in inspiration. The air is preferentially distributed to this healthier alveoli and they are open much larger. Similarly, the two in the middle. Compared to those alveoli that were collapsed in expiration, almost did not open at all during expiration. I'm sorry, during inspiration. Collapse in expiration did not open in inspiration. When you increase the PEEP, you would open some of these alveoli in expiration, and then the airspace difference between inspiration and expiration is much lower. When you go up to PEEP of 16 and PEEP of 24, you would notice that you barely able to see any difference between expiration and inspiration at PEEP of 24. What it means that it means that uh, the strain at the level of alveoli here is at its lowest level compared to PEEP of 10 or PEEP of 5. So this way, uh, when we talk about protective lung strategy, we talk about limited pressure, low tidal volume, appropriate PEEP to decrease heterogeneity, and low driving pressure. All this, what we would do on the lung, is actually minimizing the strain at the alveolar level. So protective lung strategy is a strategy that would decrease the stress in order to minimize the strain at the alveolar level. I hope I was able to uh, explain the concept in a good way that can help you understand exactly what we mean by protective lung strategy. Thank you.